Namaste, I'm Brad Trell. Welcome to this daily hip mobility rotations focused class where we're gonna focus on just that. Hip rotations, both our internal hip rotation as well as our external hip rotation in some more active flowy type movements as well as more subtle and uh, isometric movements where we're looking for a lot more stability throughout the body while working in internal hip rotation or external hip rotation. So for this class, make sure that you've got at least one block with you. We're gonna need it uh, a few times, just the one block. If you don't have a block, again, you can use a, a prop approximately the same size. I'll show you what you can do as well if you don't have a block. But if you do have one, go ahead and grab it and make sure that you have it with you for the start of class. So when you're ready here, I want you to come right onto your back. We're gonna start some very basic Spinal compression, so just drawing the knees in. I want you to kind of sway your hips from side to side. Good. When you're ready here, I want you to extend left leg forward. Make sure that you're pressing through your left heel. You're going to interlace the hands, the fingers, and we're going to start with very simple rotations of the right hip. Think of drawing circles with your right knee. Just going from side to side, both clockwise and counterclockwise. Try with both a dorsiflexion of the foot and a pointer's flexion. Both are extremely useful. So see how it feels with either or. So relaxing the breath and the process. We're opening up our hips through rotations. Good. And you can extend that right leg forward, this time left leg in. And nice big circles with the knee. You can even go as far as drawing the knee way off to the side and external rotation. Bring it closer to your right shoulder, internal rotation whatever feels best. Again, you can keep both hands onto the knee if you'd like. Make sure that you're still pressing through that right heel. Keep the right glute grounded to the mat. Beautiful. Good. And carefully extending that left leg back forward. We're going to bring the right knee back in like so. Now from here, I want you to keep your knee on top of your right hip. So knee stays on top of the hip. You're also going to keep your foot and the ankle aligned with your knee. So attempting to form a really nice 90 degree bend with that right leg. So from here, we're going to start with some internal rotation. So finding that nice internal hip rotation, I want you to draw your arms off to the side and keep that tension throughout the rest of the body. You're pressing through your left heel as you attempt to draw your right foot as far off to the right as you can without moving your right knee over to the left. Make sure you keep the knee right on top of the hip. You're going to draw the foot as far off to the right as possible. Keep the foot in dorsiflexion here and feel that abductor flexor scream at you a little bit louder. We'll just see if we can hold here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We'll draw that right knee back in. We'll go for a few more rotations or light rotations. Just notice that sensation along the abductor muscle. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Now we're going to do the same thing, except this time external rotation. So instead of bringing your heel out, I want you to try and bring your heel to meet your left shoulder. But again, you don't want to move your foot up or down. Try and keep the ankle about the same height as the knee. Knee stays right on top of the hip. So staying here, attempting to draw that heel as high up towards your left shoulder as you can. Really ground down with the palms, holding 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for a few more rotations. Your circles with the knee, both directions. This also really helps us release tension from the low back. Good. And extending right leg forward, left leg in this time. We're going to start with that internal rotation. So heel moves over to the left. Make sure that the knee doesn't move forward, back, to the left or to the right. So moving the heel over to the left, ground down, press through that right heel, and holding 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So you should really feel that abductor muscle at work there. Take the knee in. Just loosen up the hip. Beautiful. And same thing this time, external rotation when you're ready. Knee on top of the hip, bring your heel to meet this time your right shoulder. And holding for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And light rotations. So similarly to the internal rotation on the external, this time we're really feeling it toward the adductor muscle. Beautiful. And now when you're ready here, I want you to go and grab just your one block. You can sit back down. We're going to focus on one last internal hip rotation, supinated here. So what I want you to do is place both knees on top of the hips. Both ankles are aligned with the knees. You're going to grab your block and I want you to try and squeeze the block with the inside of your knees as you draw your heels out as far apart as possible. So finding that internal hip rotation, squeeze the block, draw the heels out. We'll go again for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We'll take a break. We're going to do that another two more times. One breath in between. And again, squeeze the block, separate the heels, make sure the knees stay right on top of the hip. Continue to draw that internal rotation for 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Take a moment. We're going to do that one last time. When you're ready, again, really attempt to feel your abductor muscles at work. Separate the heel, keep the feet in dorsi for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, squeeze that block, five, four, three, two, and one. Lovely. So you can place your block off to the side and we're going to counter that internal hip rotation with a nice external hip rotation drill, starting from a shin box or scissor position. So finding your shin box, again, doesn't have to be a perfect 90 degree. I'm going to start with my left leg here. And just to make it more comfortable, and just even sitting here, if you've taken some of, the, some of my classes prior, and any internal hip rotation work, so notice those drills, what, what we just did for that internal hip rotation here. We're not feeling it come up as much. So those drills are really great before even getting to this point. 
So focusing this time on the external rotation, my right leg, or sorry, my left leg, and draw my arms off to the side. I'm gonna attempt to lean as far forward as I can without my belly actually coming on to my inner thigh. So I'm gonna to attempt to draw myself forward. If I need to, I'm just gonna place my fingertips to the floor. I'm gonna hold myself here. Eventually take my hands out and holding for 10, nine, crown of the head wants to continuously reach forward, eight, seven, six, don't flop and tilt your pelvis forward. If anything, keep the belly off the inner thigh. Three, two, one, good, we'll switch it to the other side. When you're ready, lean forward. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful, let's do that one more time to each side. To progress, what you're looking to do is hold a 90-90 position. So rather than the shin box position where the ankles are a little bit closer in, I wanna try and keep a 90 degree bend to my front leg. More important that I keep it to the front leg than I do the back leg. But if you can, try and do both. Square your hips toward the front of the mat. My shin here is in line with the front of the mat. I'm gonna lean forward, holding 10, nine. You can also place your hands to your sternum. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Other side. Again, my shin wants to be in line with the front of the mat back knee in line with the hip and the ankle. If this is too much or if there's too much going on with the abductor, maybe just drag the heel in, maybe just drag the knee a little bit higher up so that you can ultimately just focus on this external rotation. If you can work toward that 90-90, you're gonna extend the arms off to the side. 10, nine, again, you can place hands to sternum if you'd like. Think crown of the head reaches forward, seven, six, five. You're pressing the entire leg down, the glute, the outside of the ankle, the outside of the knee. Five, four, three, two, and one. Back up, beautiful. And shake the legs out for a moment. Good. So now we're gonna play with a few different type of flowy rotations. Starting from that shin box position, and we've practiced this a handful of times in some of our move pad mobility series. What I want you to do is lift both knees as high up as you can. Think of bringing them actually into the armpits as you extend your arms forward. While you do this, I want you to lift the balls of the feet off the floor. So instead of coming through like this from one side to the other, lift the balls of the feet as you go over to one side and then the other side. Just going back and forth a few times. Let's see if we can go for another three. Again, you wanna actually try and feel your knee kind of scratching your armpit. Last one to each side. Beautiful, good. And again, we'll shake out the legs. Great, now to counter that last drill, what we're gonna focus on is some external rotation. I want you to grab both blocks. If you've got two, if you've only got one, that's fine, you can place it out in front of you. If you have two, go ahead and grab both and stack them over to the front left side of your mat. What I want you to do here is place your left foot on top of the block, just as if you're into this half lunge position. So here, I want you to place your hands on top of your knee, lean forward and then start 
pushing your knee out in external rotation and bring it back. So pushing it out and back. And this intense level of spinal compression is, going, is almost like restricting us in certain areas so that we're not moving the entire or the rest of the body. And this way we can really kind of isolate that external rotation as we move it off to the side and back. So we'll see if we can just move it off to the side and back for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. You might be feeling some tension along the quad, some inside to the adductor, maybe even to the glute. Five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. We'll take a moment here before we go to the other side. Same thing, right foot on top of the blocks. Again, if you do have two, I suggest you do two. You can swap this out by doing it on your stairs, just as long as it's slightly elevated. That's ultimately what we're using the blocks for. So elevate that foot and it can be much higher. You can also elevate it to even a countertop or close to a countertop. Obviously you'd be doing it standing from there. As long as it feels slightly more elevated, than your knee, and that's what you're ultimately aiming for. So hands on top of your knee, you're gonna move your knee off to the side, external rotation, and back into your chest. 10, nine, eight, seven. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed it that much, please hit subscribe. It means a lot. And if you're someone who's looking to take their practice to that next level, whether you're a beginner looking to simply improve their practice or even an advanced practitioner looking to fine tune their practice, head over to B Movement Academy, my own online school of yoga and movement where you can find all of my premium content and exclusive programs that will meet you every step of the way to meet any of those movement or mindfulness goals. All slight and love, namaste.